You know, that win might have been ugly. That win was definitely ugly. I'm not gonna mince words about that. That was sloppy. The whole game was wet. Balls were falling out of quarterback's hands. It was just not a great performance all around offensively. But damn it, if I told you that I wasn't happy after that field goal was missed at the very end of the game, the Jets field goal, not the Broncos field goal missed. When the Jets missed that field goal at the very end of the game, I was so happy. I was happier than I have been since last Sunday. It was wonderful, it was ugly, but a win is a win is a win is a win. So let's recap it by responding to some comments that the Jets fans left on my prediction video, shall we? What is up, Broncos fans? It is your boy, Derek here, AKA Strez, AKA everyone's favorite Kansas City-based Broncos fan. And oh my God, the Denver Broncos return home after going two and O oh on a road trip where they stayed on the East Coast and became better friends. The camaraderie, the teamwork, the I'm buying in, I will die for you if I have to kind of mentality that was built on this team over the last week and a half. Awesome stuff. I think that that was a great move by Sean Payton to make this team stay in West Virginia and to get prepared for this game the entire week away from Denver, away from home, with each other the entire week. I think that was just a great move by Sean Payton and the entire Broncos coaching staff. I was happy about it. I think it really paid off and the Broncos are two and two now. I don't know what more you can say about it. The Broncos are two and two after starting the season 0 and two. And there is a really real possibility that the Broncos could be four and two over the next two weeks. Well, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves here. Today, I want to respond to some of these comments that were left on my last video because they were hilarious. And while I respond to some of these comments, I'm also going to kind of be recapping the game at the same time and talking about who played well, who did what, what the stats looked like, all that kind of stuff, which you all probably know. You just came here for the fun of it to be able to respond to some of the trash talk that was posted on my last video. Uh, without further ado, let's look at it shall we? Andrew McAllister 3903 said 480 passing touchdowns versus zero equals Broncos win? Question mark, question mark. Um, yeah. Actually, it was zero touchdowns from Rodgers to one touchdown from Bo Nix equals a Broncos win. But you know what? The American public school system has failed yet another person. But yeah, all of those passing touchdowns don't mean jack squat when Aaron Rodgers is going up against this Denver Broncos defense in those specific elements. We're lying to ourselves if we tell ourselves that the weather didn't affect this game at all. The ball was slipping out of the dude's hand and he was getting hit all the time. The Broncos recorded 14 quarterback hits, five sacks, and as I predicted, Patrick Sertan completely clamped Garrett Wilson. So that was an amazing thing to be able to take away Aaron Rodgers' number one target. And on top of all of the pressure that the Broncos defense put on Aaron Rodgers, the Jets were four of 17 on third down. That's why Aaron Rodgers didn't throw any touchdowns in this game. You done messed up, A.A. Ron! He had no one to throw it to. He didn't have any time to throw it to anyone. And they just couldn't convert when they needed to convert. Hilarious. Red John 6486 says, the Jets had seven sacks against the Pats. Thinking face emoji. Guess what, Red John? The Jets had zero sacks against the Broncos. It's almost like the New England Patriots aren't a good football team this year. I should have mentioned this in the prediction video, but the only two teams that the Jets have beat this year were the Titans and the Patriots. Two of, if not the worst teams in the entire NFL. So let's pump the brakes a little bit, okay? The two times the Jets played even a relatively coherent defense, they didn't win. I don't know what to tell you. Satoru Gojo 4173, is that an anime name? I have no idea. Said, Jets 31, Broncos 3. I'm also a KC fan, by the way, and as unbiased as you can be. After watching film from both teams through the first three weeks, the Jets are just better all around. I don't see the Broncos D having much success against A-Rod. Spoiler alert. The Jets were not better all around. And the Broncos defense was definitely able to find ways to be successful. Some might say even too much success. And you pick the Broncos to lose 31 to three. I hope that you don't bet on football. And if you do, I hope you get some help. I'll talk to you later this season. Funny Stunt Videos 1423 says, Broncos fans, it's really easy. Don't overthink it like this guy. It's Aaron Rodgers, Aaron spelled wrong, versus Bo Diddley. I mean, if you think you're going to confuse Mr. Rodgers, then you're delusional. The Jets won't lose at home. Jets 26, Broncos 10. Well, you got the Broncos 10 part right, but the Jets did lose at home. And I do think with everything that Vance Joseph and the Denver Broncos defense threw at Aaron Rodgers, he struggled with it just a little bit. He had nowhere to go. 
He had literally nowhere to go. You done messed up, A.A. Ron! His best receiver was locked down. He was constantly under pressure. And he's old and coming off an Achilles injury. That was just a recipe for disaster for him. Oh, and Bo Diddley is now 1-0 against Aaron Rodgers. If you want to look at quarterback head-to-head -head wins, that's what that looks like. Corey's Train 8679 says, it's funny how his point about the Broncos pass rush being elite is them having seven sacks last, forgot the weak part. The Jets also had seven sacks. The Broncos are about to learn what pass rush looks like. I'm sorry, Corey, but the Broncos did not need to learn what a pass rush looked like because they are the epitome of what a pass rush is. Broncos had five sacks. Jets had zero. Five's more than zero, I think. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, maybe you're wrong. Jets man was responding to someone else who had responded to his original comment said, Rogers is gonna pick that weak ass defense apart and then Brees and Braylon, the killer bees, are gonna run you over, can't wait. Well, Rogers did play well in the second half. He played a little bit better in the second half for sure. Both quarterbacks played better in the second half because the rain let up a little bit, but he didn't pick this defense apart. I mean, Mike Williams played well, but other than that, did not pick us apart. He threw the ball over 40 times and only threw for 200 yards. What are we talking about here? And Brees Hall and Braylon Allen combined for 18 carries for 38 yards on 2.1 yards per carry. Yeah, the killer bees ran wild all over this Broncos defense. First plur shooter said, Jets fan here to do some homework. The Jets came off a road trip in 11 days to come home and beat a division rival in a blowout. White Broncos. Why'd you gotta bring OJ Simpson into this? I think he meant while Broncos struggled to pull off a win. We beat you with Zach Wilson. What will Aaron Rodgers do? So I did my homework and it looks like Zach Wilson beat you. Zach Wilson's record as a Denver Bronco against the New York Jets is 1-0. That's hilarious. And what are you talking about the Broncos struggled to pull off a win in week three? We won 26 to seven. Did you actually do your homework or are you just showing your ass on the internet? Because if you are just showing your ass on the internet, there are other websites to do that on. YouTube comments aren't the place. C. Brown to God says, the New York Jets are going to destroy the Broncos. This is fake news. Lying to your fans, bro. We have our best games against y'all. 34-9, Gotham City. If you have your best games against the Denver Broncos, then why was this the worst game ever? Why was this the worst game I've ever watched if the Jets have their best games against the Denver Broncos? And also, you lied to the Broncos fans. It wasn't 34-9. It was 10-9 with the Broncos coming out on top. So Gotham City didn't prevail again, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. What, I, what does Batman have to do with this? Get over your dead parents already. Didn't your parents die? I'm kidding. Relax. I know Gotham City is based on New York City. I'm a huge Batman fan. My dog's name is Batman. Chill out. Relax. Leave me alone. Mo Dudley 2222 says, This is an easy game. We've seen the Broncos the last two years at our worst and still won. And now we have Rodgers, a better O-line. We will win. You can lock up Wilson, but you're not locking up Lazard or Mike Williams or Conklin or stopping Brees or Allen. Too many weapons. <sighs> And all I hear Bronco fans talk about is their D-line as if we didn't play one of the more elite D-line in the 49ers. Our O-line handled them 31-13 Jets. They will get an early lead and force the Broncos to throw the ball, which will lead to turnovers, and our offense will continue to get better and keep your defense guessing. Punctuation will do you some favors? I'm sorry, that was the worst run-on sentence I've seen since I looked at my niece's second grade English paper. But I will give you this, Mike Williams played really well. He had some really great catches. The, the toe tap on the sideline was one of the better catches I've seen this season in the NFL. But come on, dude, you did not handle our elite D-line. Aaron Rodgers was hit 14 times. He was sacked five times. We had pressure on almost every pass play. Literally nothing you said in this comment actually happened. So, uh. Thanks for the view. Stephen Fortes 3781 says, Jets win by 10 plus. Bo gets sacked four times and throws a pick. PS2 gets burned by Wilson for seven catches, 94 yards, and two touchdowns. Hate to break it to you, buddy. Bo was sacked zero times. Bo threw zero picks. And Garrett Wilson only had five catches on eight targets for 41 yards and zero touchdowns. In fact, according to Next Gen Stats, Garrett Wilson lined up against Pat Sertan on 28 of his 46 routes, hauling in two of his three targets for 22 yards with Sertan in coverage. Wilson's first target against Sertan came with a minute and 42 seconds left in the third quarter, which Wilson caught for a 21 yard gain. Like, can we just stop the narrative that anyone is gonna beat Pat Sertan this season? 
This man is on another level this year. He did this to DK Metcalf. He did this to George Pickens. He did this to Mike Evans. Now he has done it to Garrett Wilson. Next up on the list should be Devontae Adams, but he's probably not gonna play this week because he's dealing with some hamstring issues. We'll see what happens, but I would expect Patrick Sertan to play somewhere else because they don't have a wide receiver one for the Raiders right now. All right, last comment here. Jets man also uh, again said, have you watched the Jets ever? That's what we're known for is great pass rusher and punishing QBs. Bo Nix is going to spend the week in the cold tub after the beating we're about to deliver. I'm going to be honest with you, Jets, man. I think that Bo Nix might need a hot tub. And can I get a hot tub? Because nice. that game was miserable. It was cold. It was wet. And he got the dub. You get a hot tub when you get the dub. The Jets, in fact, did not punish the rookie QB. It just didn't happen. But yeah, those are all the comments that I wanted to read through this week because I just kind of wanted to break the game down through the eyes of what the Jets fans thought the Jets were going to do to the Broncos this week and what they actually ended up doing to the Broncos this week. But like I said, man, this game was ugly. It was not fun to watch. It was a difficult watch. My stress level was through the roof the last five and a half minutes of the game because I thought we shut Aaron Rodgers down on the last opportunity he had, but then we went three and out and then missed the field goal, and then we gave the ball right back to Aaron Rodgers with like a minute 10 left. And at that point, I was like, oh God, this is not about to happen. Everyone probably thought that. Because when you give guys like Aaron Rodgers a second chance to go lead a game-winning drive, usually they do it. But... The Broncos defense bowed their necks. The Broncos defense said absolutely not happening today, and they refused to allow it to happen. You done messed up, A.A. Ron! I said going into this game that I was more concerned with the run game than I was the passing game because I wasn't concerned about players like Garrett Wilson or Alan Lazard. Didn't really even think about Mike Williams, to be honest. Everybody forgets about that guy. But I was more worried about the run game, and the Broncos completely shut down Brees Hall and Braylon Allen. They had the ball on the one yard line after we got a pass interference in the end zone. Could not convert on three straight rushing attempts from the one yard line. Now, why Robert Sala and Nate Hackett didn't want to put Braylon Allen in in that situation is beyond me, but I've seen his coaching decisions before. I wasn't surprised by that coaching decision. I'm going to leave it at that. The Broncos took care of business. The Broncos may have figured out their running game issues. Now, Tyler Bidet, that was a scary instance on that field when he got hit in the back, had to get taken off the field in a stretcher from the sideline. He is back in Denver. He is going to continue to recover. He's got movement in his extremities. He's gonna be okay, which is really good. But at the same time, Javante and Jaleel got going. Our run game got going. Javante in the second half started to look like the Javante that we were expecting as Broncos fans in this game. And look, I know everyone wants to talk about the elephant in the room, which would be Bo Nix's uh, stat line, but honestly, I couldn't care less. Bo Nix struggled in the first half, yes, but at the same time, our receivers weren't breaking tackles. It was wet, rainy weather. Aaron Rodgers also struggled in the first half, but in the second half, Bo Nix looked so much better. When we needed a touchdown, Bo Nix marched down the field and got his first passing touchdown as an NFL quarterback for the Denver Broncos. I shed a few tears. I was so happy to see it. It's time to go. He's going to continue to grow. I doubt we see another game that's this sloppy of weather. I mean, how often do you play football games in the remnants of a freaking hurricane in New York? When will that ever happen again? But I honestly don't care. I don't care that Bo Nix only threw for 60 yards. I don't care that he had negative seven yards at halftime. I don't care about any of that stuff because you know what he didn't do? He didn't take sacks and he didn't turn the football over. That is the most important thing about playing quarterback for this Broncos team. We figured out the run game. Our defense is so good. And he took care of the football and performed exactly when we needed him to perform. So it doesn't matter. I'm giving him a pass. It's his fourth game in the worst weather possible. He gets a pass. I don't care. 60 yards. All that matters was he got the win. That's the most important thing when it comes to playing quarterback in this league. He's going to learn from this outing. He's going to figure out what he needs to do next time there is a wet, rainy game. And we're moving on. We've got two divisional opponents coming up the next two weeks that are two very winnable football games. And there is a very real likelihood that the Broncos might be looking at four and two two weeks from now. But in reality, the only thing that matters today is the fact that the Denver Broncos are two and two. They've won two in a row, both on the road, and are coming home for two straight games at home. So enjoy your victory. Enjoy this game. And honestly, let's go Broncos. God bless Bo Nix.